Siwan is a very relevant play to us today. It's, it's the first one where Saunders Lewis starts moving away from the purely classical tradition where he wrote um, of epic events of, based in Welsh mythology or Welsh history uh, and epic conflicts between good and evil, right and wrong. Here, even though he's still got a historical backdrop of the prince and princess of Gwynedd in the 12th century, he actually looks upon the mechanics of a marriage in a more modern way. And you see fallible people uh, through infidelity and lack of understanding failing to make the marriage work. There's uh, a fracture of the marriage. Uh, there is then, there's an ambiguity in their feelings towards each other. There's a compromise. It, it looks at um, some very difficult areas of human relationships and that's a, much more modern than a classicist way of looking at that theme. So I think it's, it's very relevant to, to today's audiences. And also it's relevant in another sense because of all the Welsh language plays um, written, I think only two probably deserve the title of being great plays. If you looked at a canon of British literature from Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England, only two Welsh language works deserve a place in that canon. Both are by Saunders Lewis, his play Blodeiwedd, The Woman of Flowers, and this one, Siwan. So I think it's, it's worth looking at today because it represents probably the pinnacle of Welsh theatre writing um, in the in the whole of the decades where uh, professional theatre flourished, it hasn't been bettered, even though it was written in the 50s. So it's, it's well worth going back to. Set in medieval Wales, at the centre of Saunders Lewis's play is Suan, outspoken and politically astute wife of Llewellyn, Prince of North Wales. The story tells of her illicit affair with the young Anglo-Norman marcher lord Gwilym Brewis and of the terrible revenge taken by her husband when he discovers the lovers in the royal bed, the repercussions of which not only lead to war but reverberate down the centuries to contemporary Wales. Even chains around my leg or being tied to a wall like a fairground bear. This chain's heavy and it's full its weight. The weight of a prince's anger. It's my dignity so much, I hardly feel the pain in my leg. Before now, I've ordered men to be manacled and chained without even guessing at the indignity of it. Princess, you're only to stay in chains until today, is that? Are you allowed to carry messages for me? I don't know. He mentioned nothing about that. That's my only need. The only service you could render me. What is that incessant hammering out on the green? Some military construction, I'm not sure. You must have seen them working when you crossed the yard to come here. I didn't pause to get a proper look. Will you have some more wine? Go to the window and look out. This chain stops me short of seeing outside. If my father were king, I'd known I'd be tethered like some animal for painting. So, what are they building? It's hard to see properly from this window. I don't like to be girl, you can see perfectly well. I've looked through that window myself countless times, so tell me. Madame. Don't ask me, please. I beg of you. Let me leave you now. What's wrong with you? Why are you shaking? Go calm down. Tell me, what's happening out there? A gallows, madame. A gallows. Gallows. Oh, well done, Shirley. That's my punishment. Oh, your rage is greater than I imagined! Oh, don't cry, Alice, if that's to be my fate! And I mean, not you, madame. It's not for you. <laughs> the gibbets is for Gwyn and Brewis. No one is moving now, except Gwilym. He's testing the ladder. Even feeling the noose, easing it around his neck. And now he's ascending the ladder, like a ship's captain to the prow, sounding confident and unbowed. This hour, the hour of his dying, amen. The executioner's not moving. He's not laying a hand on that ladder. 
It's moving away, starting to disperse. The show is over. It's been a letdown. What do they care about a widow down in Brecon? Or a princess imprisoned here, distraught and eaten up by anguish? Hey, the leprosy cuts off the sufferer from the rest of the tribe. It's the one dark corner in their bright and babbling world. <laughs> you lot. Yes, go dance. Go laugh. Go crowing your Welsh bravado. From the depth of this hell in my heart, I curse you, Sir Ellen! <sighs> oh. 